Hello everyone and welcome back. In this small video, I'm going to show you that how you can pass data from the child model to the parent. So let's go ahead and get started. You can see the first of all, I have a content view over here, which simply has a text view. I want to have a button that is going to show me a modal. So I'm going to go ahead and put that inside a V stack, a vertical stack and going to create the button. And I'm just going to say open modal. All right. Now you can use the navigation link, but by default navigation link control uh, or the navigation link uh, takes you to a push navigation. All right. So if you are actually using the navigation view within the navigation view, but I want to show a modal. So I'm going to just use a button itself. And I'm going to go ahead and say sheet. And now I have a couple of different options. I have is presented and this is a bindable property. So this property is a state. So I have to pass in the state and the content. The content is what do you want to see? What do you want to show? So let's start with the is presented and the bindable Boolean property. So I'm going to go ahead and create a state. And this will be a private var is presented. It doesn't really have to be call is presented. We're just calling it the same thing. And now I can pass it as a bindable property. Self dot is presented. You don't really need self. You can say is presented. I just have a habit of writing self. And the next one is the content. So what exactly do you want to present when you click this button? And what I really want to present is just a text view for now and which will say model. All right, and that's it. Now, if you go ahead and build the application, it's going to build successfully. But if you run the application and press on the open modal, let's see what happens. So we're going to go over here. And once it reloads uh, in a live view, then we can go ahead and click on this modal. And you can see I'm clicking and nothing is really going on. The reason the thing is going on is that we never change this property is presented. When this property is true, then we are going to show you the text. But this is never true. It's false. So most of the people go ahead and do this. It's presented, but since it's a Boolean property, you call toggle. There's no really need to call toggle. I mean, you know that you want to present it, then go ahead and set to do true. All right, let's go ahead and run it again. And this time when I click on open modal, it shows me this modal page or the text view. Fine. This is good, but I don't really want to show a text view. I actually want to create my own view. So I'm going to go ahead and add a brand new view, a new file, which will be a Swift UI view. And I'm just going to call it child view. Great. Now what this child view will contain is it will have a text box where people can go and write some text. So let me go ahead and have that V stack. And I'm going to go ahead and create a text field. And initially inside the text field, we will have enter message here. And the bindable property will be self dot dollar sign message. All right. Now, this is a message that we actually want to send back to the parent view. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a binding property wrapper and a property called string, which is message of type string. All right. Now you might be wondering why did we use a binding over here? Why did we not use state? Well, child view doesn't really have any state of its own, but it would like to change the state of the parent. So we are calling it binding, meaning you have to pass in this property when you're creating a child view. But the child view itself doesn't really have any state. When the parent is going to pass in a bindable property and when the child is going to update that property, it will be reflected automatically in the parent. Now let's go ahead and type over here is presented. Well, we don't really have is presented or anything over here. So we do have message. And we're going to pass in some constant message, which is nothing right now. Okay. 
Now, if I go ahead and try to see what we have over here, let's see what's going on. So we have a text field. You can see the text field is being appearing, but I want to make the text field a little bit more better. So I'm going to go ahead and use the text field style. And I'm going to go ahead and use a rounded border text field style. So it will have rounded corners. So let me see. So a little bit, you can see rounded corners. And now I can go ahead and add a bit of padding. And now it's looking much nicer, right? The final thing that I want to do is this is a modal. So I do want to close this modal. But how do we close it? That's the question. So we can use the same exact technique. We can use or we can create a binding property which can be is presented and which can be Boolean, meaning this particular property will be passed from the parent. Now let me go ahead and add that it's presented and by default, I'm gonna go ahead and pass in false. All of this part is just for the preview provider, which is going to create the preview on the right hand side. So once we click the button close, we will go ahead and change this property to false. Since this is a binding property, when you change it to false, when you actually pass in that stuff from right over here, it will automatically change it. So let me show you. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a child view over here. You can see that in order to use the child view, we better provide or pass in the is presented, which we have and the message, which we don't have. So let me go ahead and first pass in is presented. But for the message, we don't have that property. So I'm going to go ahead and create a state. We'll call it message. You can call it anything you want. And now I can pass it as a second property over here, which is message. All right. Let's go ahead and try again. Okay. Let's see what's going on. I think the build is even failing. Let's go ahead and build that. And the build is successful. Let's go ahead and run it again and see if it's successful. Okay, and let's go ahead and press the play button. So now I'm gonna click on open modal. It opens it up and now I can write something over here. Let's say if I'm gonna write this is message and I will say close. So it closes, but how do we see the message over here? Well, the reason we don't see the message over here is that we don't really have any control that is displaying the message over here. So let me go ahead and display just the message in a text view. So right now it is displaying the message, but since we don't have any message on line number 14, it displays nothing. Let's go ahead and press the play button. Again, we're gonna click on open modal. And now I can say this is a message and I will close it. And you can see that we were able to pass the value from the child modal back to the parent. The main or the interesting part of all of this is how we have passed these values, these state values, these bindable values from the parent, which is a content view to the child. And inside the child, those values are being used as bindable properties or bindable values. Meaning that once you update these values, by changing the property on line number 23 or by adding or concatenating the text, whatever you're writing in the text box, these values will be updated over here, but these values will also be updated right over here in the parent, all right? So that's the whole way of doing transferring values from the child to the parent. If you want to learn more about creating Swift UI applications, then check out my best-selling course, Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for Any Apple Device. You can see I already have close to 2,400 students and 4.6 rating with bestseller. This is a more than 12-hour course, which will start from the very basics, building lists and navigation, and then it's gonna dive into some advanced stuff like the MVVM design pattern, implementing the coffee ordering application, it's also going to cover property wrappers, forms, models, and including core data, and finally covering the Swift UI for all devices, meaning that how you can create apps that will run on iOS, watchOS, and macOS. 
So this is an amazing course and you can see that's why it's a bestseller. The best way to get this course is simply to check out the YouTube description. You will see a link in the description. Please use that link to get that course because if you use that link, you will get the best deal and I get to keep a little bit more of the revenue if you use my links. So thank you so much. And hey, you know what? Check out some other courses. I have a lot of courses for iOS development, even Flutter development and Node.js for server-side JavaScript programming. So if you like any of those courses, all the links are over there in the YouTube description. So go ahead and use those. Thank you so much. And I really hope that you enjoy the course.